exactly $109 to build this entire thing, and it can almost play Starfield at 60 FPS. A lot of you have been asking a long time for another ultra budget build guide, so here you have it, and honestly, this wouldn't be that hard to repeat for yourself. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this if you're on an extremely tight budget. We're fully benchmarking this build so you know exactly what it's capable of, and all of that's coming after a quick word from today's sponsor. Fiqua, and specifically their new FN955 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Now on paper, this is a super fast Gen 4 drive with reads up to 7,350 megabytes per second, and right up to 6,500 megabytes per second. So of course we verified this ourselves and here are the results. Our write speeds were actually a little bit faster than what's advertised. This SSD is also the definition of stability and reliability because it's gone through 80 hours of rigorous testing at various temperatures and FICWAT utilizes top tier quality inspections and testing practices. That's probably why they gave it a huge five year warranty. There's also a graphene heat dissipation sticker so you definitely don't need to worry about overheating. So if you're trying to decrease loading and file transfer times and get those silky smooth startups for your games and applications, then check out the FICWAT FN955 by clicking the link down in the description or in the pinned comment, and thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. All right, so just so your expectations are properly set, here's the smoothness of Starfield in 1080p low, here's what Modern Warfare 3 looks like at 1080p minimum, and here's Helldivers 2 at 1080p low. All three of these games obviously have the graphics settings cranked down a fair bit, but these are all still playable on this $109 gaming PC. The most important part of these all ultra budget builds is the base OEM desktop and you absolutely have to find a good deal if you go down this route. This here is an HP Z230 that Nemes and our ZTD Discord server found me per usual and this thing is a beast of a starting point for this type of project. For $43 on eBay, I got a fully working office PC that some corporation probably didn't want anymore and it's packing some decent hardware. The CPU is an Intel i7-4790, there's 16 gigs of DDR3 and it even came with both a 2.5 inch SSD and a hard drive. Now, I did actually kind of get scammed on eBay, but some people would probably just call this word crafting on eBay, I guess. The title of this listing says that there's a 1.03 terabyte SSD and HDD, and I don't think you can interpret that any other way than a one terabyte SSD and a one terabyte HDD. However, if you scroll down a bit to the notes section, which I obviously didn't do, here it revealed there's a one terabyte and a one 256 gigabyte, albeit it doesn't even explain which one's which. What ended up arriving is a one terabyte WD black hard drive and then this 256 gigabyte Kingston SSD. What I was thinking of was, um, oh, I can't believe you've done this. Honestly, I probably would be a little upset about this if it wasn't for the fact that they shipped me a fully working PC for only $43. At that price point, I can let it slide. Whenever you're shopping for these super budget OEMs, the most important things to look out for are a good gaming CPU with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and anything other than that is honestly just a bonus. Sometimes these corporations or big companies will just completely remove the storage drives and as long as you're buying the PC at a good price, that's still perfectly fine. Now, in regards to this i7-4790, yes, this is a decade old at this point, but this was a very top of the line CPU back when the GTX 900 series GPUs were brand new. People were pairing the 4790 and 4790Ks with cards like the GTX 980 and 980 Ti, so that means it can certainly handle slightly newer cards like maybe a GTX 1070 or even a 1660 Super. Fun fact, the first actually high-end gaming PC I ever built was with the 4790K, and I paired it with a GTX 980. This was a present to myself when I got back from a deployment to Afghanistan in 2015. But more importantly than that is we are limited with which GPU options we have available because of the power supply that comes with these OEM PCs. Now, usually these OEMs actually include include a pretty decent unit, but it's also usually a low total wattage output. This one here is only rated up to 400 watts, and the other limitation is that it doesn't come with any 6 plus 2 connectors. One route you can take is to simply choose a graphics card that doesn't require any external power connectors, such as the RX 6400 or some GTX 1650s, and even Nvidia's latest RTX 3050 6GB card would work as well. We're actually going to test this build with the RTX 3050 6GB card just so you can see the numbers, but obviously if we want to keep this build at $100, we can't use a $180 graphics card. And instead of going down that route of a motherboard powered GPU, the other option you can take is to get one of these SATA power to six pin adapters. I wouldn't necessarily say these are the safest thing to use, but as long as you buy the double SATA connector versions and one from a reputable brand like StarTech, I think you'll be perfectly fine. These cost around seven bucks, which I did add to my total today. And I've used these in so many other builds that I fully trust them, at least with budget low power GPUs. And speaking of which, the GPU we're going with 
is none other than this HP GTX 1063 gigabyte card. And I found this also on eBay for $59. I'm actually a little upset because I also found this RX 574 gigabyte card for 35 bucks. And that would have kept us well under the $100 total price, but the seller ended up canceling on me. So I only ended up with this one GTX 1060. This puts our total cost of the project at just $109. And like I said, this honestly wouldn't be that difficult to repeat for yourself. GTX 1060s are all right around that price point, And I definitely didn't do a snipe on this or anything. The hardest part would just be finding an OEM for this good of a price. And real quickly, before we get into the benchmarks, for those of you that keep asking me to do a $100 full custom gaming PC, I really think that you need to realign your expectations. Sure, if you stumbled upon a few free parts and did some serious sniping on the local marketplaces, I'm sure somebody could still do it, but it's simply not a realistic goal to set anymore in 2024. And every single video that I make, I'm trying to give you guys not a step-by-step -step blueprint necessarily, but at least a guide that you can somewhat copy for yourself. I personally don't get much enjoyment if I were to only use once in a lifetime crazy deals that I know you won't be able to replicate for yourself. With that being said, if you do want to build a $100 gaming PC, I personally think that the only way to do that is to go down the Dell, Optiplex, or any desktop OEM route. One other thing that you may have noticed with this build, and pretty much all the time when you buy these OEMs, especially for as cheap as I paid, chances are high that it's going to come absolutely looking disgusting, and it could use a little cleanup job. Honestly, I don't think you really need to do anything other than take it outside with a leaf blower for like 30 seconds, but feel free to clean it up further than that if you think it's necessary. Usually, I'd also recommend doing a full thermal paste reapplication because that original pace is probably in beat up shape, but we were on a time crunch and a little rush for this project, so we didn't even bother with that. I only did the quick leaf blower job, so honestly, it's still not looking great inside of here, so let's move on to the benchmarking section and stop concentrating on the dust bunnies. Like I said earlier, we're actually going to be testing with both our GTX 1063 gigabyte as well as the RTX 3050 6 gigabyte card. We actually released a full video of the new 3050, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner, and I'd say this card is definitely towards the highest end that you can go with for a build like this. When we were in the planning stages of this project, Project, I originally thought that it would just be crazy to use a brand new RTX graphics card with a 10 year old CPU. But then when you actually look at the benchmarks, like in our video, you realize that the 3050 is just about a 1660 super. And then this combination doesn't seem so crazy after all. So first up we have 3D Marks Time Spy and our $100 gaming PC cranked out a score of 3,679. And when we added in a $180 brand new GPU, that only got about a 1000 point bump up, which is honestly kind of sad. Next up we have Helldivers 2. Please don't judge this game play footage because that's Sam playing, not me. And intended to be with low settings, our $100 bill got an average FPS of 51 and it only went up to 56 with the 3050. That's potentially a little bit of a CPU bottleneck going on here. For Cyberpunk 2077, that's definitely not the case as this one is heavily GPU bound. And in 1080p with low settings, our $100 bill definitely struggled only getting up to 40 FPS. And with the 3050, that got us up to a very nice 69 FPS. Starfield followed up after that. And I don't even know if we can fit all the disclaimer settings on the chart for this one. We put them at 1080 low with a 50% resolution scale, FSR turned on, and frame generation turned on as well. I'm not sure how many of you noticed, but ever since the frame gen update, Starfield has become much easier to run on lower end hardware these days, and our $100 gaming PC averaged 56 FPS. Not too shabby. After that, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and with 1080p minimum settings and an 80% resolution scale, we were comfortably over that 60 FPS mark, even with just the GTX 1060. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and honestly, I'm pretty impressed at what we're looking at here. Sure, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and Hogwarts Legacy didn't quite hit 60 FPS, but everything else is above it. So this is definitely a playable system here in 2024. If you're on a super strict gaming PC and you only want to spend about $100 on your PC, then this is definitely a route that you can go down, but it's not necessarily what I'd recommend doing. You guys know, I'm never a huge fan of just recommending people spend more money, but sometimes that advice is actually warranted. I'd personally vote for hanging on to that $100 and saving up a bit more until you have 200 to $250 because then you can get a much better system that's just as easy to build as this one. With that kind of money, you can hunt for an OEM with a much newer platform such as Intel 8th or 10th gen CPU and DDR4 RAM, and then you can spend the rest of that money on a better graphics card as well. But just like normal, it all comes down to your specific situation and your specific budget. And if you think that's a good idea and you want to spend about $200 to $250 on a gaming PC build, then I'd highly recommend using the graphics card that's in the video that's on the screen now.